of JD and the Sump C. Um, this week's episode, we're going to be uh, giving some color to this uh, kind of noir wall that I've got going on right now. Um, yeah, so right now what I'm using is inks, uh, another filter, just to give some color blotch and give some direction as to which way I'm going to be going, you know, when uh, we go into the further painting stages. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I, yeah, this is, this is great. Um, there's a lot of people watching, watching us a little bit more. Um, and I, you know, Jay and I appreciate it. Um, you know, we're just, we're kind of just showing off another way of modeling and everything else. Two old guys going at it. Um, so in this, yeah, uh, a big decision that I had to do uh, was figuring out where to start with the color blotching. And I figured I'd highlight, hi, um, I'd highlight the metals. Um, so we, I usually do this with um, sometimes contrast paints, but most of the time inks like that. Uh, that's raw burnt umber. Now I'm going to be upgrading with raw umber on some different metals. Um, when we, or when I, when I do the oil stages later, um, this will all blend together. Um, so I don't know, some of you might be noticing that I'm using a different kind of airbrush. It's a badger, uh, really like it for the detail works. Um, yeah. So I'm going to keep going here and I'll come back when we do a swinging color. So now, this is when I'm actually going to be spraying some paint on it. Um, I do filter the paint down. That's uh, um, a brown air paint by GW that I use uh, mixed with some uh, contrast paint. Uh, I think it's Saigor Brown and Bestial Brown. Um, and once again, not going for coverage here. Simply going for filter color. Um, the brown is chosen because all the rest of my columns and walls on the rest of my board are brown. So, or all my boards, pretty much. Um, the uh, the floor tiles are yellow as well. That's a, a, a yellow oxide ink that I use um, for that, which will be coming up here. But yeah, this is this is simply just getting getting some color down. Again, um, you know, we're, we're, the filming thing is coming along here a little bit, um, a little bit of the back of my head, but you know, hey, that's okay. It's pretty back there too. You can see all the bald spots and what happens when you get older, fellas and ladies, seems. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, oh yeah. Um, I want to bring this up at this point. Um, my handle on YouTube, or uh, sorry, on uh, Facebook is Ethmongool. Um, I didn't know if there were any any uh, confusions about that, you know, who we are. Uh, Jay is Johnny Chop um, on the Facebook. Um, and Discords as we spread here. Um, haven't quite got there yet because I'm trying to get the hang of actually doing my hobbying and videoing at the same time. And, you know, I'm an old guy, 
high so I can only do one or two things at once. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get base colors on all the extras. Yep, there we go. All right, so now we're gonna do the floor tiles. Um, yeah, this is yellow oxide ink. Um, this is all somewhat thinned out. Um, I think for the red later on and uh, the other yellow, I didn't thin it down. Oh yeah, and the turquoise, I didn't thin it down. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, this is just buildups of colors. Um, the shadowing, the massive shadowing that I did, um, which, you know, takes the most time, um, you know, and it is in preparatory for this. Uh, this is, uh, each step as we go further gets easier and easier and easier. Um, and the amount of mess ups and things now, you can probably see we got overspray. I've gone back to my, uh, very cheap air gun, but um, I'm testing out a new needle size here. This is a .05, um, just so that we could get some stuff done. And then to work on some control issues. Um, you know, always working, trying to make things better, faster, um, more precise, with less precision actual movements. Um, I've been doing this for way too long to be wasting time on, you know, real precision things, but, uh, especially with terrain. Um, the other trick is, you know, you, you, a lot of this stuff that I'm working on right now, especially on the tile where the shack's going to be, you're not going to see any of that stuff anyways. Um, it's, you know, it's all going to be covered up. Uh, this yellow on here. Um, a couple of other things to make or to uh, to bring up. Um, I'm planning on doing a little bit uh, some new techniques with oil work here um, on this later on. Oh, here we go. We're filtering up the sump. This is exciting. Um, that's uh, thalo yellow green um, that I have there. Um, like to keep the sump a little bit more on the yellow than the blue spectrum, which uh, kind of keeps me away from the regular thalo green, which has a lot of blue in it, um, or turquoise towards the sump. Um, yeah, this is a little new for me because none of my other wall pieces uh, actually had the sump on them. Um, I slide tiles that I've worked on, um, just butted up underneath and, and up to uh, the other wall pieces so this is kind of new for me is the sump gonna match eh, I don't know as long as you're in a generalized you know point that's generally the way I like to do it the, the exactness of everything is you know somewhat neat if you're going to play on the same board every time um, most of my stuff uh, well even these things are uh, you know, modular so I can move them. All right, so now we're gonna go into some spot colors here. Um, yeah, this is thalo blue. And we're gonna do a couple of crates. Then we're gonna go to a magenta. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna start working on uh, other bigger pieces on the, on the board here. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, I, I, modularity uh, to a certain extent is uh, kind of the, the name of the game. We do a lot of moving with my terrain, you know, across the, you know, the state here in Wisconsin and uh, into other states too. Um, people, I have a lot of people in my gaming group spread all over the place. And when we get together, you know, I like to bring all my stuff and set it up, um, play some Necromunda on it. You know, it's... Uh, a lot of fun this this whole concept that i had with this board oh look there's, the, my, there's my back great great videoing yeah sorry guys i'm still working on this um but uh yeah anyways we we have a a very very strong group been around for a while now 
Um, most of this stuff is all junk from there. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously I bought some stuff too, but um, okay. So now we're filtering in the tanks. Um, it's kind of funny because from here, that yellow almost looks the same, but that's not yellow oxide that I have there. That's uh, uh, yellow orange, which is a different highlight or a different uh, spectrum, which will come out later. Um, and here's my new little trick to help you guys as far as my videoing is concerned. Yes, my walls turn. So I can set it up so I don't have to move the camera so doggone much. Even though I am moving the camera. Um, yeah, these turned out really nice. Um, especially when we get to the lock-in color, which is generally the pipes and the uh, Sector Mechanicus stuff. Um, I chose red for most of my stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, when that comes out, that's kind of when it really brings everybody together for the pipe work and all the other Sector Mechanicus stuff we've got out here. But, uh, yeah, I like the way these this little conversion worked. These things look nice. Okay, yeah, there we go. Some crimson red ink. And we're going to be working on the pipes. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'll let you guys watch for a little bit. And uh, I'll be back in a second. doing this red um, there was quite a bit of overspray um, I'm playing around with my settings on my airbrush here um, it's not a concern um, like I said these inks that I'm using are thinned down um, simply for color placement this also comes into play um, with the help of the blotching of the concrete um, it's very difficult in this light still working on the lighting guys um to see because you could boy it certainly does look like uh <laughs> like i've got a lot of overspray but once it fully dried it wasn't it's not so bad and i'll be able to suck it up with the oils and the shadowing effects that i'm doing okay so here we're doing some uh another color this is turquoise for some of the uh the mdf crates and things laying around get the one down that the crane's going to be sitting on kind of interesting because uh yeah you know, the turquoise has quite a bit of blue in it um and still green worked out really nice with this sump version that i'm doing here um at least so far um i don't think contrast is the right word but uh yeah so Turned out really nice. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with it. When we get to the end here, we'll have uh, some close-up shots of everything. Okay, so now we got some lime green. And this is going to be some uh, another filter on the sump itself and then adding some sumpy effects. Um, uh, not to mention the uh, 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 plasma conduits. Um, I like green, some guys like blue. I've done blue on some of my stuff too. But for this, I figured I wouldn't add another color. I'm already adding quite a few of them. Um, yeah, so, and all we're doing is targeting spots. Uh, once again, thin down. So this looks a lot more brighter when it's wet than you know when she dries out. Um, but we're trying to hit the higher spots. You can see some of that texture that the uh, the uh, tissue paper gave. Um, pretty happy with that. Actually, I'm really happy with the way this sump is looking. 
but here we go. We're going to do some of the plasma conduits. Get a little bit of fresh paint on there. I'm going to be highlighting the conduits pretty much the same way I did with the, uh, the pit fight field. So to the left there, you can see the big pile of unprimed stuff that I still got to get to. Um, hopefully that'll be the next video where I can show you guys how I paint that stuff up. Um, yeah, I have uh, the two airbrushes. Uh, both come in handy. Uh, one for the finer details like this. Um, and one for the big blotchy areas. Um, yeah, the bigger blotchy one, that's just a master's little $35 guy on Amazon. And uh, yeah, here we go. All right, here's the slow, the, uh, just the tour after she's dried for a little bit. Things are starting to blend as they dry. That red is a little bit much. I might hit that with gray before, uh, before I go ahead and oil things up. Yep, there's that sump. <laughs> That's looking really nice. Now we can hit some black on those areas too. Maybe I'll see what's going on. But yeah, everything looks like it has a Crayola line around it right now, but we'll fix that. If I have to take an extra step, then I have to take an extra step. That's just fine. Um, anyways, you guys, thank you so much. Um, have a great night.